cinnamon bear. Judy and Jimmy are on the island of Obi, and I must say they're in a most terrible predicament. The roly-poly policeman was perfectly willing to give them their silver star, which he had pinned on his chest, but by the time they rode down the shore to get around the magic wave, which kept them from landing, and walked back up the beach, what do you think had to happen? Well, that old crazy quilt dragon, who you remember likes bright, shiny things, got to the policeman first, and off with the silver star. Our three adventurers were hot in pursuit when all of a sudden the cinnamon bear vanished into thin air, just like that. Oh, dear. Where could the cinnamon bear have gone to? He was right here before us just a minute ago. Well, come on. Let's start looking. I'll go in front of you. This island of Obi surely is a funny place, Jimmy. Just like the pirate captain told us. That roly-poly policeman and the magic wave that wouldn't let our boat land on the shore and... Jimmy! Jimmy, where are you? Oh, dear. Now he's disappeared, just like Cinnamon Bear. Jimmy! Jimmy, don't leave me all alone. Come back. I guess I'll have to go on alone. Oh, dear. I wish I were home with Mother. Hey, Judy, we are over here. here. Judy! Oh, Why, Mother. Jimmy! Cinnamon Bear! We must have crossed some kind of a magical boundary, Judy. I could see you and hear you, but... You couldn't see or hear me. I got so scared. Well, let's go on now. Sure. Hey, look ahead to your right a little. There's a house. Maybe somebody could tell us if Crazy Quilt Dragon's been here. Say, look, Judy. What's that sitting on that post in front of the house? I don't know, Jimmy. I do. It's an owl, and he's got his eyes open. I never heard of an owl with his eyes open in the daytime. It must be more magic, I guess. Look. He's got spectacles on. And he's holding a big dictionary under his wing. He's certainly like no owl I ever saw. There's a sign over him. Professor Whiz, the educated owl. Educated? That's why he has that big dictionary. How funny. Maybe he's seen Crazy Quilt. Uh, excuse me, please, Professor Whiz, but we've seen your name on the sign and... Saw my name, you mean. To whom? Well, seen or saw, it doesn't make it any... It makes a great deal of difference. We seen is a very gross grammatical error. To whom? Why do you always say to whom? I thought owls always say to who. Uneducated owls, I regret to say, have fallen into that error. I, knowing my grammar, would not think of saying anything but to whom. Well, I don't care if you say to whom, what you call it. We're very anxious to get some information, Professor Whiz. Yes, we had something awful funny happen to us. We were just going along, and then all of a sudden the cinnamon bear here disappeared. Then I went ahead, and all of a sudden I saw him again. <laughs> but Judy, that's my sister here, she couldn't see or hear either of us, though we could see and hear her. Do you know what ha makes that magic, Professor? Oh, we 
Indeed I do. That's a very small variety of magic brewed up by the Wintergreen Witch. Does she live in that little house? Yes, but she's not home at present. She left on her broomstick only this morning to attend the witch's convention. Well, why do you suppose she made it so he disappeared like that? I believe her intention was to keep her habitation invisible while she herself might observe the action and appearance of all strangers in the vicinity to whom. I guess she didn't like visitors then. Such English. She doesn't, not she don't. To whom? Do you live in the little house with her, Professor Quiz? Oh, no, I should say not. Occasionally I give her English lessons, but our association is strictly educational, I assure you. I have never been inside her house. To whom? It must be funny giving lessons to a witch. Not at all, my dear little girl. The wintergreen witch used only to speak the witch language, which is a very primitive tongue, very. When she came to live on the island of Obi, she found it very awkward not speaking the same language as other people. So, I came to her assistance, and while I must admit she exhibits a deplorable tendency to split infinitives, her idiom is, in the main, correct. I don't understand what he means, Cinnamon Bear. He means, uh, he means that the witch is doing all right. Have you seen a crazy quill dragon around here anywhere, Professor Whiz? Oh! Definitely. He went into the house just a while ago, asked me if it would be all right if you went in and looked around a bit. Did he have a big silver star with him? Oh, yes, I'm sure he did. Did he come out again? No, I would have seen him in that event. The Wintergreen Witch says there's only one door and I happen to be sitting in front of it. Well, do you suppose there's any place inside where he could hide? My dear young fellow, I haven't the vaguest notion. I've never been in there, I told you. Besides, I'm much too busy thinking about grammar to fiddle-faddle around. Do you suppose it'd be all right if we just went in and looked around? Oh, quite. There can't be anything much in there, but go ahead. Just wait till I get my paws on that dragon. If I don't make his crazy quill colors turn black and blue... Dear, dear, such goings-on. I could never remain in this vicinity to witness such banal vulgarities. So, if you will permit me to absent myself from your company, I shall wend my way in the direction of my humble domicile. Goodness, whatever does he mean? Oh, he means he's going to shove off. Well, thanks for the information, Profy. Not at all. Don't mention it. Well, off he does ain't. Adios. To whom, to whom, to whom. Gee, he certainly talks big words, all right. Just like the principal of our school. Say, if we're ever going to catch Crazy Quilt, we better get into that house in a hurry. You go in first, Cinnamon Bear. I'm just a teeny bit afraid. Oh, don't be scared, Judy. This isn't anything. It isn't locked. It's only one room. I don't see the crazy quill dragon in here anywhere. Let's look around good. He might be hiding under something. I don't know where he could hide. All there is is a fireplace with a lot of pots. I suppose the wintergreen witch makes her magic in them. My, isn't that a big picture? It surely is. Takes up the whole wall. My, my. Look at the trees in it. Just as real and lifelike as can be. Jimmy, I'm sure I saw one of those trees move ever so slightly. Let's see. Why, you're right, Judy. The leaves are moving, like there was a little wind blowing. I'm going to look at it closer. That tree near the frame is awful close. I touched it. It's real as can be. This is some more magic, children. That's where Crazy Quill went, I bet you. Into that picture forest. Come on, let's go. We haven't any time to lose. Oh, boy. Hi, Mim. And me. This is a really, truly, sure enough forest, all right. Isn't it pretty, Jimmy? You bet. Gee, these are awful big trees, aren't they? Bless my stuffing, yes. And there's an awful lot of places where that crazy quilt dragon could hide. We'll have to look very carefully. What was that? It sounded like something moving. I'll bet it's crazy quilt. Let's be on the safe side. It might be crazy quilt, and then again it might be something awful dangerous. Tiptoe. All right, Patty. But let's look. It stopped now. Meow. What was that? It was a funny little noise. Why, it's nothing but a kitten. Meow. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Come here, little kitty. Meow. Gee, it's scared of something. Oh, don't be afraid of us. We wouldn't hurt you. Come here. Poor little kitten. Who are you? And what makes you so frightened? Fraidy cat, fraidy cat, I'm just a fraidy cat, much more afraid than a kitten should be. 
Brady cat, Brady cat, no man or lady cat ever got frightened as easy as me. I'm afraid of my shadow, it makes me so sad. Oh, I would be a little bolder if I did. I'm such a shy feline, I just make a beeline for the safest place to hide in when I'm scared. Brady cat, Brady cat, I'm just a Brady cat, whining example of what not to be. Brady cat, Brady cat, just an old Brady cat, sometimes I even get frightened of me. What are you scared of now, little kitty? I saw a great big giant a while ago. Oh, there couldn't be any giants here. Well, you could see them away off if there were. But this is a magic forest. And you can't see it if you're outside of it. And this great big giant lives outside of it. And I'm so, so scared. Maybe she's seen the crazy quilt dragon. Did you see the crazy quilt dragon in here, Freddy Cat? No. Oh, is there a dragon in here, too? Oh, what will I do? Oh, sure. He's a very harmless dragon. His only fault is that he's too fond of shiny things. But it's a dragon. And I'm scared of dragons. Besides, I'm black and shiny. But he isn't a bit dangerous, not like a giant, you know. Oh, now I'm scared again. Mew. You certainly are a fraidy cat, all right. Better let me get you out of that notion right now. You've just got too much imagination, that's all. Oh, don't be scared now, fraidy cat. Let me pet you a little. I like you. You're very nice to poor little me. Most everybody else talks loud and scares me. There, now. Nothing's going to hurt you, little kitten. And you won't have to be a Freddy Cat anymore. Try to be like me, Freddy Cat. Now I'm just a cinnamon bear with two button eyes. But I'm not afraid of anything, even if it's twice my size. Am I ferocious? Garah! But I'm not a cinnamon bear. I'm just a little kitten. Oh, that's all right, but you should try. Try to be like me, little Kit Cat. Courageous, undaunted. A pillar of strength, a tower of... Oh, it's that big giant. Unicus, she's right. Look, Cinnamon Bear. Oh, wow, let me out of here. Gangway. If it isn't one thing, it's another, and this time it's a giant. I'm sorry to say it, but I don't see how our little friends can ever hope to outdistance a giant that's bigger than a house. And I, for one, am going to be right on hand next time to find out what happens to Judy and Jimmy and the Cinnamon Bear. (laughs) 